All right, blessings, everyone. Well, I'm just going to get started here. I just want to say that since this whole thing with the mist um, has been brought up uh, right after I had done my video, uh, Jonathan Kleck, I think it was the following day, um, uploaded a video concerning the mist, the movie, the mist. And so I, I just, you know, had to shake my head thinking all of a sudden now there's this mist and Katy Perry, you know, wearing the white, um, where I was struggling with my pictures the other day and, uh, trying to show you, um, what I see. And then I would have people say, you know, we're not to believe in what it is that we're seeing in front of us because of the, you know, the devices and being Satan's devices. Well, this is everything I've been warning everybody about. Now, why, why would you even think that I'd be very light in bringing this to you if I didn't think it was important and true? I don't know. You tell me, what do you think about the Pope and the, and the growth coming out of his face, the picture that I took? And then look at the negative. I think that was in real time. Now, the mist. Now, all of a sudden, it's all about the mist, you know? And uh, I'm not kidding you. I, I went to the river the next day. And the river that was just covered in mist. Yeah. So it seems to me what is being brought forward by mouth is manifesting in front of us. So you have to look and see, well, if this is the case, then we have to be very, very careful in what we say. If it's going to manifest before us within a day. Because you cannot sit there and tell me after I did this whole thing with the mist and the, and the pictures, all of a sudden we have Jonathan Clark come out with the movie, The Mist. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, have you hear this man's testimony. I think it's worthy of listening to. There's a lot here that he's speaking about that I am really connecting with. It resonates with me. I can identify with some of the things that he's talking about, and I can put it right into scripture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of these things, and I'm just going to play this out. I'm asking for patience and endurance in this because this is taking its time getting to where I know where this is going a little bit, you know, but uh, where this is going to end, I have no idea. I am just moving as everything is being brought forward to me and I'm giving it to you as soon as I can own it. And what I mean by owning it is to believe. I am open to receive, but I'm very careful in what I'm receiving. I don't need to hear someone say, it's the lights, it's the bent light, it's this. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And I know what to look for. So... If you don't believe, that's fine. That's fine. But you're on the wrong channel. Because this channel is all about the believers. For the believers. Don't harden your hearts. 
thinking you know it. You know all of it. Don't do it. So here we go. All right. This is going to be his testimony and I'm going to be breaking in with my own testimony and I'll be uh, using some scripture here. Okay. So yes, um, this is no coincidence that bringing up the blue mist and talking about witchcraft and sorcery, Brother Nolan has done a fantastic job showing just that, how this is all manifesting in front of us. I really do suggest you go over and, and, and just take a step back. It doesn't mean you have to like the person to understand and hear the message. So here we go. Dear sister, Sister John Rose went his way into the hearts of Africans and in their despair, wise men of the Mashona people wise men of Matebele people tried to make Cecil John Rhodes one of them. They told him about the secrets of the Matobo Mountains, that under the Matobo Mountains lies a city, a city of great wisdom, which is the home of the last survivors of the Chitauri God beings in that part of Africa. And if you go to the Madobo Mountains and you carry a four pound hammer and you strike certain parts of that landscape with that hammer, it gives out a hollow sound which shows you that there are caverns deep underground. There are two sets of mountains. There is the Matobo Mountains, and then to the east of Zimbabwe, there are the great mountains known as the Inyangan, the Weeping Moon Mountains. There, even now, people disappear without trace. Sometimes a person would disappear for several days and reappear a few days later, not knowing where he had been or where she had been. And white people have disappeared there. Black people in their thousands have disappeared there. It was there that I also went missing for four days in 1959 in one of the most traumatic experiences of It's a long story. My teacher, Elizabeth Moyo, had sent me to get a special head which grows only on the foothills of those mountains. It was just an ordinary day like any other, just a beautiful day like this one outside here. And I, I love the African wilderness. I'm at home in the bush, especially in the days when I was still in good health. I love the animals, I feel I love the, their smell, and I love the smell of the vegetation. And I was looking for this head when all of a sudden a, a bright blue mist fell all around me. It took me some time to react to this strange thing. It was a hot day and all of a sudden the temperature around me dropped. It was as if I was on the slope of a very cold mountain, but it was a warm day. And then the next moment I was in what appeared to be a metal light tunnel, a curving tunnel, and I was lying on what looked like a workbench, a very large uh, workbench of some kind, you know, an iron table which uh, uh, an 
engineer or somebody working with metal would use to, uh, for welding and cutting metal apart. But this workbench was very brightly polished. And there I was lying there with my trousers missing and only my khaki shirt. When I saw again through what appeared to be like blue mist, a number of moving objects, which at first I thought were dolls, and these objects were moving towards me. I noticed too, with mild surprise that they were very thin, short. Okay, he's going to say short there. All right, now I know there's going to be a lot of people that have a hard time to receive this kind of knowledge. But I have to tell you myself that at the age of five, six years old, I saw this thing, this very thing that he's talking about, that it looked like dolls. It was small. I was about five or six, so it had to be about my height because I'm looking at this eye level, this thing. Okay? So I do back him up. And I'm a witness to these things that he is talking about as he's, as he's describing them. Now, I've only seen them in their outfit, okay? And I just want to say really quick that you see the dolphin here? You see the waves? It's called the Navy SEAL, right? Military. This screams military. So again... I back him up when he says that they're small. Yeah. But human-like creatures with a very, very large melon-shaped heads. Mm -hmm. The creatures had no noses. Yeah. They, like as human beings have, they had only small little holes on either side of where the nose would be. And their mouths were like knife cuts. Yeah, see, and, it, and that's exactly it. Because when he, this thing called out my name, and I turned around and I looked right at him, there was no lips. There was no talking with words. It was all within the mind. Remember this. It was in the mind, telepathy. MK. Bottom of their faces. And these creatures were coming towards me. In color, they were gray like certain uh, types of fish. And they wore silvery gray garments which reached up to their necks and up to their wrists. I Okay. Like certain uh, types of fish, and they wore silvery gray garments which reached up to their necks and up to their wrists. I couldn't see whether they were wearing boots or not at that time. Okay, so here I tried to play around with what I was trying to show you. These are the, this is what he's talking about here. Okay. All right. Okay, I took the, like the blue, this is like a negative. All right, so you can see. The, the shadowing a little bit more here. You can see the darkness where, okay, his turtleneck, broad shoulders, very thin, okay. Whoa. Zoom in a little. But this is like all the very close. This is the original picture, and you can see the blue mist. In, my, in the camera, the picture that I have taken, it's blue. I never put it together. I had no idea until, until I started playing around with these things. Okay.
But again, like I say, you can see it looks like goggles or whatever. But uh, again, here, turtleneck, the outfit, jumpsuit here. That's what it looks like. That sounds like that movie Signs. Remember the the the, sh the movie Signs with uh, Mel Gibson, where the this being is holding his son and he has it in the middle of his palm and it's a mist that this boy breathes in. Remember that. And this thing was standing above my head and looking down at me, and I was looking at its eyes which were very strange indeed. It was as if it was wearing plastic goggles over its eyes. I could see its eyes inside these tinted goggles. And it had holes on either side here, but it had no nose as I had. Its jaws were very small, and its mouth was a slit with tiny little scale-like things where its lips should be. And the creature carried a horrible smell on it. I can't describe that smell. It was a metallic chemical smell like, which seemed to combine the smell you would smell when somebody is burning brass or copper. And a very ugly chemical smell, these two smells combined. And this creature was looking down at me. I was frightened, but I could not move. And the next thing I knew was a terrible pain on my left back. It was as if somebody had just stepped me right to the bone. I screamed and I tried to jump away, but my body was my body was inactive. I could not move. I was not tied to any chain. I was not chained to the top of this table. There was no belt tying me, but I could not move my body. And when I looked down at what was happening, I found that one of the shorter creatures had driven something very painful into my left thigh. And then, while I watched, horrified, the creature pulled out this thing, and I saw that it was like a pencil made of shining metal with what appeared to be a flexible uh, uh, cable at the back, and before I could do anything, sir, my head was seized by the creature above me. It caught me. Okay, so here, what I'd like to talk about a bit is my brother, when he had his surgery, um, okay, the first time they, you know, they had to cut him open, but the second time he went in, uh, they did it through the groin and they, they did the surgery that through his groin. And so this is where I'm thinking when I, when I listen to this, this gentleman here, the shaman, it's a, it's an operating room. It's an operating room, clear and simple. And what they're doing is surgery. And what they've done, and they, they can do surgery, and they go right up the nose, and they could do brain surgery. They, they, I think they mummified their, you know, back in Egypt, the same way as through the nose. So many things could happen going up. And so this is why I believe, you know, this is what happened to him was just that, 
surgery, surgery on the brain, um, the heart, I, I don't know, but uh, yeah. And can you imagine having surgery? Well, this is what happened to him, right? With no anesthesia and nothing for pain. Real raw here, you know? some noise made here and I'm not sure but it doesn't sound very good um, I'm gonna try to grab that again, 12, 15. just listen very carefully it's it sounds like someone's hacking or clearing their throat but I don't think it's you don't see it from him just it's at I think 12. 57. But I could feel the, the flexible cable moving inside me, right into my body. And then, ah, I can't describe it. There it is. It was as if my seed was being sucked out by this small, bright, flexible cable. And then the creature just pulled it out. I screamed and I cried and I screamed, but I could not move. And then something happened, which to this day still amazes me. After the creature had pulled out the flexible cable from my organ, the creature just stood there looking at my organ. And I was so terrified that I urinated and accidentally urinated against the chest of the creature. It jumped away as if I had shot it. 
and it stumbled backwards into <laughs> right out of the, the movie signs, right? Where there's a bunch of water and uh, the beast or the whatever jumps back, yeah. Signs. But its face didn't show any expression. Its mouth didn't even open, but the way the creature reacted, trembling all over, it was as if I had really hit it, but it was wearing this kind of garment. And after that, I was left alone, except for the big creature, which stood to one to my right side this time, with its arms folded, looking down at me. And then, while I was looking at this creature, trying to appeal to it, no pain anymore, no pain, please, I was pleading. Pictures suddenly flooded my mind. Pictures of buildings sunk in a red, in a red lake of, of water. Buildings rotting away. Buildings that appeared as if they had been bombed. And cities sunk in terrible mud. Trees sticking out like rotten ghosts. Trees without leaves, without branches. Sticking out of the mud as if they had been poisoned. I saw visions of this. See, and how is the how is he receiving this vision? He's seeing it through them, through the beast. How is that happening? Through the mind. Remember Mary Magdalene and Jesus, when Mary asked Jesus, what sees the vision? The soul, or the, the spirit or the soul? And Jesus responds by saying, it's what's in the middle. So this creature, this beast, who I believe is connected to Cain and Cain's lineage. Okay, this is the, the, the nation here that the military is defending. But we'll get into that later, okay? And then, through an entrance which I had not seen before, came a strange and terrible being. It was exactly like this. It was tall, made entirely of metal, with burning eyes and a snout. It didn't do anything. It just moved and came to stand at my left side. It didn't touch me or anything like that. It just stood there, making a strange humming sound. Wow, 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 like that. Frequency. Okay, well, I'm going to stop it here. I really wanted to bring forward just a little bit of the surgery that was done on him, the brain surgery. I want to move it just a little further here because it's something he says here and it just really makes a lot of sense because it was something I asked many, many years ago. It was a question that I would always bring up in prayer and it just seemed to be answered through this man here. So watch this. Listen to this. And then, from behind this metal creature, there appeared another creature. It was so radically different from the great creatures in that it looked exactly like an earthly human being. It had a pink skin, like that of an, a, a white woman. It had golden hair, and its ears were definitely pointed, like those of an animal. Its eyes were slightly slanted. They were pale, pale blue, and never once did they blink. It was like this. 
Never once did they blink. You, and there was a tail-like appendage that you... Bam, there you go. And this is what my brother was saying. My brother said, Avatar. And it was sexual with him. And doesn't Avatar, if I remember correctly, they're green and they got the pointy ears, you know? So, yeah, I forgot to, to bring that in there. Okay. But since that time, I have found that I know things that, that a man of my standard of education does, shouldn't know. These heads, and those who know me can confirm, these heads not only have made these sculptures using ancient African metal casting secrets, these hands believe it or not, can make guns and working jet engines. And one day I wish you to come back to South Africa and I will show you one of these things. I know things which I shouldn't know and it started at that time. Now, you see, sir, I don't, I want to know what am I? Since that terrible time, my life as a man was really messed up. And one day I will, let me tell you something. Since that time, I have become a very confused creature. Very, it's very, it's embarrassing really. But since that terrible day, I became bisexual, which to me as an African is very, very disgusting. Since that time, my mind is, doesn't seem to be my own. Okay. I'm just going to read this out because I'm running out of time, okay, and I'll continue in another video. All right, uh, Matthew 19, I want to read uh, 11 and 12, I believe. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to the whom it is given, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, made eunuchs of men. And this is what I believe happened to this shaman, this gentleman right here. Okay, he was made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs which made themselves eunuchs by choice for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Luke seventeen thirty four, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Okay. Running out of time. Talk soon. No fear. Be love. Give hope.